Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have some new contracts here. We've got Science Day from Space and Around Earth. Well, that's pretty basic, but it doesn't pay particularly well either. Uh, we do sort of lack scientific instruments that we haven't already done, though I think the gravity scan over different biomes might work out. So we could potentially do that. Uh, under RP2000, uh, we have now Lunar Flyby, Lunar Impactor, Lunar Orbit, or Pass the Karma Online with Crude. So that's a little bit limiting. Uh, the main contracts in RP2000 are, are all milestone-ish contracts. They're not like casual contracts. But fortunately, the game itself produces uh, contracts that are perhaps a little bit more conducive to just sticking around Earth, for instance, position a satellite in a specific orbit of Earth. Uh, this is a tough orbit to get into, though. Uh, one uh, circular around 1,250 kilometers, inclination 2.7. It's the inclination 2.7 that's a little bit tough. It does depend on your launch site, but we're talking about from the KSC in this case, and launch a specific longitude of ascending node. But otherwise, at least it's not a uh, weird sort of orbit, right? It's uh, orbit that... I mean, inclination 2.7 is a little bit weird, but at least it's not inside the atmosphere or something strange like that. It does also have this equatorial orbit of Earth. This one's a little bit weird because it's going retrograde. So I'll grant that one's peculiar and that's really high going retrograde. I'm not entirely sure what the point is of that. But anyway, auto-generated contracts, you know, at least we've got something other than tourism contracts being offered. So, yeah. Uh, as far as what I want to do, you know, maybe we could try this one. It doesn't pay that well, uh, but we could possibly do it within our budget. That's a tight, tough inclination to hit, though. It's a tough inclination to hit. We could cheat and just change our launch site to crew or something. Uh, there's nothing, I think, stopping us. Um, uh, maybe Kerbal uh, Construction Time won't be happy with that. I'm not too sure. How it feels about the upgrade points if we go to if we go to Kuru whether we'll still have the upgrade points I'm not sure but yeah we have to get a lot of money to unlock you know the launch pad so we can have a vessel mass more than 40 tons the tracking station if we want to go to the moon I could probably hit the moon blind but uh, having the maneuver nodes would be a good idea so there's a lot to consider our rocket right now is not exactly conducive to hitting a very specific orbit. That's another thing, not with these SRBs at the top. And right now we still haven't unlocked any of the new technology yet, so we don't have any more controlled way of getting ourselves there. Our RCS is super weak, it's meant for a CubeSat. So, if we want to do if you want to do the precise satellite orbit stuff, we probably would have to wait until we get the next technology. It might actually be easier to get to the moon. <laughs> uh, I want to try this one, so I'll pick it up. Though the failure is expensive, so... But duration is five years. By that time, we'll have something. Science data from space around Earth is good, and it gives us uh, extra science points. No, that, not that we're pressed on science points right now, but how about lunar flyby? We've only got one year though, so we have to watch out for that. Let's see if I can do that blind. Now we got three active contracts. We will need a bigger rocket. I'm not going to trust SRBs for this. So what we want is to configure the Araby stage. Uh, pointing in the right direction is going to be interesting though. But maybe our weak little nitrogen RCS will be good enough for that once we're in space. Whoa, truss. I, th I don't remember seeing the truss shape before. That's interesting. It's a new feature to procedural parts. I'm not too sure having procedural part tanks be a trust is a good idea, though. Okay, well, we have some extra nitrogen, but there's still one Newton thrusters on those CubeSat RCS things. 
and I haven't fixed the reaction wheel here. There's no point having too much delta V with the ARB sustainer stage or the XASR stage, oh sorry, AJ1027 stage because it only has one ignition. We should only have enough to get to the moon with a little bit of extra. We're probably gonna widen this a little bit so that we can have a nice bigger lower stage. Uh, this might be overly ambitious for our rocket with these surface to wear missile engines. So you got five of them at the bottom there now. But it's not getting up to the Delta V that I need for a moon rocket, that's for sure. It's a rocket, but it's not a moon rocket. Do we have radial decouplers? No, we don't. We don't have radial decouplers yet. I'm thinking that this is not going to be able to do that mission. We need better engines. Well, we need better something. We do have the pad limit, 40 tons. The issue right now, though, is that we don't have real decouplers, and that's an Engineering 101, I think. So, yeah. Maybe we just have to wait until we unlock the additional technology. So, yeah, mainly... It's basic rocketry, or from Engineering 101, we do have the photon interplanetary stage from uh, from uh, Rocket Lab. That's handy. That has a much better ISP with the RCS, and also it has RCS. But well, anyway, we do have a selection of engines. Um, the Ether engine has multiple ignitions. But we have RCS ports here. That's most important. We've got efficient RCS ports up here. That's really what we need. That'll solve the problem. That'll solve a lot of problems, really. It's efficient RCS ports for the win. So yeah, I'm just going to wait. 29 days for basic rocketry, no problem. We now have a much better selection of engines, but we have to be careful. We still have to pay to unlock them, though some of them are cheap, like this one kilonewton thrusters. The equivalent of $21,000 to research that. Hopefully that's reasonable. So let's just completely redesign this. It's not Mabel anymore. It's not gonna be iffy. We don't even need the nitrogen RCS. We've got a proper RCS port here. It's a whole 40 newtons. Well, actually, nitrogen is probably not a bad choice for it, but it does have HTP. That looks like a good plan. It'll allow us to sell the fuel down and also rotate. Hopefully that's a good plan. And we'll have four of them. Just like that. But tucked in. Oh, it, does, it has hydrazine. Oh, okay. No, forget it. Hydrazine. Definitely hydrazine. Two units of hydrazine that we can fit in these tanks. It's probably still more than enough. I like the ignitions of the ether engine. I'm not too sure how many it actually would have had. Um, I think we got to see it in action at least once or twice, right? With Astros Rocket 3. 3.3 kilonewtons. Or we could just get a 1 kilonewton thruster and call it a day. Ah, why not both? This is just... Uh, Hydrazine 1 kilonewton thruster though. The ether is better. Let's see. I mean, what what kind of burn time do we have on it? Uh, it's got basically unlimited burn time. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna have to worry about its burn time. Maybe I need to change that so it's not so OP. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. And then for this stage, what do we want? Oh, probably the RD215 needs to go into a different place. I don't know how that popped up here. Should be in one of the special categories. And yeah, I, I'll have to fix that. That probably shouldn't be available to us without unlocking the special manufacturers for it. We do have the special engines from the Shirsred engine pack, which aren't particular to any company. 
This also has 10 ignitions. Yeah, it's a little bit more neutral. I think since it is effectively my engine, I should probably use it. It is pressure fed. Not super vacuum opt. It's reasonably vacuum optimized, MMH and Mon 3. It's weird to have a carrier lock stage here and then an MMH and Mon 3. Oops, MMH and Mon 3 here. But it would work. 10 minutes of potential burn time with that. It was meant to be more of a lander engine than anything else, like a lunar lander engine. Um, in this version, it does throttle to 51%. Well, it's a shame we couldn't get the whole 5 eBay engine rocket done, but probably better if we didn't. So we need a good sea level engine. The Reaver 1 for Firefly Alpha is pretty good. Delphin engine is cheaper to unlock. We'd have to have many of them though. Well, I'm already using the Ether engine from Rocket 3 and I'm not going to remake Rocket 3. <laughs> it's probably safer if I don't. So we'll mix and match. We'll go with a Reaver engine, I think. It's expensive. It's not the most, most efficient thing. Right, it's got 278 sea level, 295.6 vacuum. The Delphin engine's a little bit better off. We can potentially get by with a single engine here, but it's tight. Four minute burn time there. I mean, the burn times I set for the engines in the small rocket pack were generous. We wouldn't be able to control roll, the roll is not strictly speaking necessary. Unless something very strange happens. This is looking a little bit weird, but we'll take it for now. Well, we've got the Reaver engine from Firefly. I guess we can call this Serenity. Okay, well, let's try and fling it over to the moon and see if we can do that. Takes 45 days to build it right now. Takes 8 hours to roll it out. Okay. Let's launch. No, we can't select it as our target, so we can't do it that way. All right. Yep. Just checking. So we go with where the tilt of the moon's orbit is at its peak. And we want to launch when, because it's Cape Canaveral, we want to launch when our launch site is facing this end. So we're pretty close right now. Probably we're not going to be exact, but we're pretty close. That's the target orbit for the other, the for the satellite contract. That's going to be tricky. But then again, with the Delta V we have in here now, maybe it would be doable. All right. Well, let's see if this works out. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. It's going up. Engine failures are still potentially a thing. Real plume. Maybe I should fire. Uh, it's not firefall. Uh, waterfall them. We may have wanted separatrons on the second stage. We'll see. Payload adapter with control core short circuit. Does that mean we have no control? I don't know what the effect of the short circuit is. Maybe we're just leaking electric charge. I mean, the payload adapter and with the control core is, of course, our control core at this moment. Well, yeah, I think so. Hmm. The CubeSat technically has some control. Okay, hopefully we can ignite safely. Let's see. Okay, it ignite, ig ignited, and uh, it is a pressure-fed engine, so still fairly low thrust-weight ratio. Let me try and get rid of the fairings. Hmm, antenna-wise, we might not have a long enough range antenna. I forgot about that. To the moon, I don't think we have enough of a range, but we're not planning to do any corrections, so we won't be able to do science around the moon on this one. 
we'll have to up the range on the control core in the CubeSat or in the payload adapter using real antennae. Okay, we still do need to use one of the ignitions on the ether engine in order to make orbit here, but let's separate and go. Might as well deploy those solar panels. Plume resizing might be necessary on this one. Okay, well, it's getting a little bit out of control here because I don't have all the little dialogues with my vertical speed. We'll just try and coast up. We have to maintain communication though, so that's... That's a thing. It's starting to get weak here. Well, I think we'd better try for it here. Point down a whole lot. Okay. Well, it's a weird orbit, but it's an orbit. It's a lot less weird than the previous orbit we made with a rocket, so... Improvement! Okay, so... We can't plot anything. We're tilted... Quite a lot. And... We're not going to have a chance to correct this because we're probably going to be out of communication range. So we're going to try to burn out from right around here-ish if we have comms. Oh, that's too far away. But that would be good for our inclination because right there I think would be the best time to hit the inclination of the moon. Well, it'll have to be an off-plane transfer anyway, because of the tilt. So, as we pick up here, I think I'm going to risk it. We actually don't have enough delta V right now. Okay, uh, cut it a little bit too close. We also have this malfunctioning payload adapter. So, this attempt may not work out. We'll see. Let's go. Ignition failure on Ether. Well, that seals it. Well, at least, uh, at least there wasn't other issues. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Um, yeah. Okay, we probably have too much hydrazine here. But yes, we lost the Ether engine. We could try to do science from space around Earth if we get power. which we seem to be not oriented at all to get liquid oxygen boil off there. Oh, it's automatically doing smart ASS things. Okay, well, then we can get power. Well, that's not useful. So, well, grab that gravity scan still has 0.2 there. Okay, yes, the 0.2 left in the gravity scan worked for the science day from space around Earth, so it wasn't a complete loss. All right. Well, this can just stick around. It's got some hydrazine to station keep if it, if it likes. We will set that aside for now. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Well, now we have a new position, a satellite in a specific orbit of Earth, and it's only to 10.7 degrees. And it's a lower orbit. We might as well get some more work out of the Ether engine and get some more data units for it so it doesn't randomly fail on us. 10.7 um, is hard though, especially that low. Yeah, let's just try for the moon again. This time though, we're going to make sure we have enough communication. And Delta V. Um, we do need the high pressure tank, right? Ether engine? Yes, you're pressure fed. We could probably reduce these a little bit. Okay, antenna planning. Can we do the moon? We still haven't gotten tech level 1 even potentially because we need to get engineering 101 for that. Probably by the time this rocket has been, has been built we'll have it, but um, no connection like that. If I top it off, 
No, we can transmit but not receive, so that's no good. But that's topping it off all the way, and that takes a lot of power. Hmm. Yeah, so we're not going to be able to communicate very far. We can probably communicate from geosynchronous orbit, though, which is pretty good. You know, we could take an advantage of the extra ignitions, and we could do a mid-course correction just before we lose communication. I want to have two of these reavers. That might be too much, though. That's a lot of thrust-weight ratio. Oh, wait. Uh, these don't need high-pressure tanks. Oh, maybe we only need one and we just need to get rid of the high-pressure tank. We're still on just aluminum gridded tanks. Okay, maybe we don't need two. That's better. Okay. Okay, let's try this version of the Serenity rocket out for size. 52 days until we get Engineering 101, 46 days until we've built the Serenity. We've got extra science. Biology experiment. I mean, as far as Earth orbit science, we're running out of stuff. Landing... I mean, we might want struts, but we could land on the bottom of our vessel or something like that. Radial mount shoots there and a lot of heat shields. Eventually we want that stuff. There's not a whole lot going on. Modern control core is nice for stability. But we've already got the payload adapter control core, so maybe we don't need this separately. But if we get fancier engines, especially a first stage engine, like this one, uh, to replace the reverb, then we probably don't need to upgrade the pad so soon. We can stay below 40 tons, and that would be a good thing. So, all right, we'll research that. We want the better engines, but that's going to take 394 days, so we can't wait for that. And right now I'm not tossing upgrade points into things because, well, though we have one available, I'll, I'll toss that into R&D. Um, I'm not tossing the upgrade points into things or spending money on them because we might need to upgrade, like, the tracking station to get certain things done or mission control, so... Anyway, time warping till the Serenity rocket is built. Okay, we've rolled it out. Engineering 101 is almost done there. Okay, but first, let us try to line up with the moon as best we can. Okay, well, seems good to me. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Ignited, and go. Just 375 data units and counting. Ignition fail rate, failure rate 1.92%. Mean time before failure about 2 hours. Okay, well, definitely past the speed of sound. Probably through max Q here, and I've gone too steeply. <laughs> but, uh, it's got fairly low thrust weight ratio. And once again, the payload adapter short-circuited. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't rely on it for our control. It seems prone to short-circuiting. Okay, staging. Woo. And fairings. All right, separation and ignition. Okay, still a little bit lopsided, but all right, better than last time. Okay, now for the moon again. How are we? Ah, uh, we're much better as far as inclination is concerned. That might be good enough that we can just time it so that we can go when we need to go. Which, which is now. Uh, it definitely now. Point prograde, please. Um, can we make the burn before we lose communication from Bermuda? Right now we're still communicating through the Cape. I think we can. All right. Ignition. Delta V wise, we're okay. 
Come on, Bermuda. We need you. Oh, great. We're connecting through wallops, but not Bermuda. Come on. Bermuda's got to be a better signal. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, we should have Bermuda. There we go. We won't be able to see in an encounter, though. We'll just have to sort of hope. <laughs> we might be able to get some signs from high over the Earth, though. Probably it's going to be tough hitting the 5,000 kilometers away from the moon part. Okay, cut it. Okay, I'm gonna say that that's probably good enough. I'll, I'll put it a little bit further. Maybe that I will regret, but we don't have any basis for doing a mid-course adjustment except maybe pulling it a little bit further up. Well, our oxygen is pretty much out now anyway. Oops, we, we aren't connected. I won't do anything. Just on principle, I won't do anything while we're not connected. I think that's probably just out of range, because there's probably some station that we would connect to. If we could. And we've lost electric charge. Okay, let's just see what happens. I'm just curious. Will we get to the moon? There's some glimmer of electric charge. Many lunar probes have had this sort of situation before, it's fine. It's practically a CubeSat anyway, it's just attached to the body still. Oh, we're losing RCS ports. Maybe O scrap is a little bit too strong. Another RCS port failure. I think we'll at least get into the SOI of the moon. Okay, it needs to stop failing my RCS ports. I might need to change the strength of its RCS port failure, so maybe we'll get too far away from it like this. Okay, we got into Lunar SOI, but we're not close enough. I can tell that's not 5,000 kilometers. We're, uh, yeah, 19,591. But still, I consider it an achievement to get this far. Of course, we don't have any comms, we can't do any science. And really, uh, Lunar Flyby only counts if you maintain communication with it, as far as I'm concerned. But still an accomplishment, I feel. We've uh, flown by the moon. So I think we'll wrap it up today uh, with these attempts at the moon. We lost a lot of RCS force, didn't we? But yeah, for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.